Hey, what's up, friends? You got Gypsy back here today with, uh, we got ITL playoffs happening right now. Um, I was originally supposed to record this with my boy Aki, but my man is asleep. <laughs> he slept through. He's supposed to wake up, but, uh, yeah, my man clicked rest and he did not wake up, unfortunately. So I'll probably just be doing this by myself, but hopefully you guys enjoy. I did these last season. It's pretty chill. Um, obviously I'm not playing myself. Uh, Aki and myself uh, received first round buyers for being uh, top of our respective conferences or divisions or however you want to call it. So we we actually don't play till semifinals. Um, but this is the first round of the playoffs. And we've got Phantom Base, aka Tyler versus Eric. And uh, yeah, two guys who have got crazy strong teams this season and have performed really well. So the victor of this game will go on to face Aki in the semifinals. So that's, that's pretty sick. Like, it's pretty hype. Um, yeah, both of these guys have definitely uh, made some nice, uh, made some nice uh, performances this season. You see, Eric over there has uh, has McGinna, and you see Tyler's got stuff like Kieran Black and Lando. So yeah, busted teams. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna restart. We are three turns into this game, but gonna restart and see what happens. So we see uh, we see Tyler leading off with Harry Armor, big body Harry, the beast. Uh, Eric just goes for that uh, spikes, getting the nice spikes up turn one reveals to be a sash set. So this is actually a guts Harry armor, so this is a this is a big problem to Eric's team. Like, whilst it's revenge by stuff like Laddie, it's um, oh, it's really fat. You see it chews that side shock and knocks it out. So this is potentially really bad for Eric because Laddie was a, a massive uh, win con in this game. Just looking at um, Tyler's team, like he really has very little, nothing outspeeds it, barring a scarfer. Um, it may have been a really nice revenge to stuff like Lando and Kieran. If it was a Carmine Sashok set, it's set up on Suicune, Arcanine. So this is <laughs> looking pretty bleak for my man Eric here. Uh, he does have Magina, so <laughs> he could turn this around. But yeah, um, Tyler's use of early game Guts Hariyam is really proving to uh, be pretty effective against Eric. So we'll see how he, how he tries to approach this. Obviously, Crook outspeeds and can't get the kill. It reveals to be a Moxie set, so that's pretty sick. Um, this could be a like Moxie, or, like scarf set perhaps. Uh, although with stuff like Landorus and Arcanine, like it's not it's not going to be the most effective mon in this matchup. He's going to be forced to click knockoff. And uh, the interesting thing about the ITL is we actually have uh, two Z move mons per squad, so both uh, both Landorus and Kieran Black are Tyler Z move users. So this is how nuts <laughs> this man's team is. Uh, Yep, two, two Z move users is, is uh, kind of questionable, but to be honest, it hasn't been that much of a problem this season. But Tyler just happens to have two of the, probably two of the best Z move users in the in the format. I firmly believe Landorus is, and although Kurum has a myriad of amazing sets, Z Kurum is no joke, and that is definitely something you can't sleep on. So he's got plenty of options in uh, in terms of his Z move users. You see uh, Crook knock out the Hariyama there with a knockoff, so he finally takes down this beast. He gets the uh, he gets the Moxie boost, which is apparent as you didn't see the Intimidate earlier. Um, this is going to be interesting to see what Tyler does bring in. He, obviously, he has stuff like Kurum, which outspeeds. He's got uh, he's got the Coon there, which can take hits, can take a plus one knockoff with ease, even if he's a banded Crook. And uh, he can just you know weaken him with a skull, but he actually chooses to go into Manetric, so this is a very interesting play. Um, very interesting play by Tyler. Not, not too sure why he made this play. If this is a Scarf Manetric, it's not going to kill this Crook. And if this is a... Crook is just going to knock him out with knockoff. Uh, he's not got no reason to go for Earthquake in case he is Shooker or in case he wants to bait. He wants to scout for Scarf and go into Lando here on the EQ. So in my opinion, Eric's play uh, every day of the week here is to click knock. Um, Tyler has taken Spike's ship, which is going to be pretty uh, pretty important because if Eric is a like a late game trick room or shift gear Magina, which can really honestly just put in a ton of work this game if he can put uh, put Arcanine to a range of health where it's in range of like T-Bolt or something like that um, Magina can really just sweep this game up uh, if he's like a flash cannon ice beam or T-Bolt set with like a shift gear or trick room that could uh, really be a threat to, to Tyler's team depending on the Arcanine set yeah, most, most teams are now packing uh, fire types in order to check Magina. We see uh, he is actually, a <laughs> my mistake, he is actually a Mega Manetric. So that explains why uh, he opted to go into this. Um, but even so, if this was a Scarf Crook, um, Knockoff wouldn't have done too much to this Manetric with the, uh, after having its attack neutralized by the Intimidate. But uh, in the same token, like Crook, 
could just Oko this back with Earthquake if he wasn't a Scarf set, which, like I, like I mentioned earlier, Scarf is kind of kind of strange in this matchup. He actually gets him with a Pursuit, and I believe that is a Banded Pursuit. So that's a that's an amazing play by Eric, because what that means is now Min Minetri is going to go down to Spikes. That's one less thing to check Magina. So we see we see the tables turn a bit here, although now uh, now Tyler does have his Landorus in here. So probably the, my favorite one in the format is inside. And this is looking a bit a bit bleak for Eric now because chances are that's banded damage or maybe that's like a super high roll from Adamant Dread Plate Pursuit. But uh, this this really puts Eric in a tough spot because now he does have a Landorus staring at him in the face. So this is probably his stealth rocker if he did up to ring rocks. It could also be a double dance set. Um, Scarf, not, not the greatest in this matchup in my opinion because he does have Bronzong. Bronzong is a pretty solid check to Landorus as well if he's like a dual stab setup variant. Uh, so we might see knockoff here on this uh, Landorus, which would not only hit the Bronzong, but also hit the Delmas too. Um, unfortunately, I believe his Bronzong was burnt by Minetrix Flamethrower, so that's pretty unfortunate for Eric. Um, of course, if he is like a Hidden Power Ice set, it's not going to be too... It's not going to be too bad for him. Um, and if Bronzong is his, like, switch into Landorus, chances are he will have Hidden Power Ice and that to just two KO it comfortably. Uh, it will be interesting though, that, that damage from Flamethrower looks to be Spadef uh, Bronzong because it only took 23 from Flamethrower and Minetrix not, Minetrix not that weak, so <laughs> yeah, this is uh, definitely an interesting game so far. If he can uh, manage to get up rocks with his Bronzong, he's really going to be putting some solid chip on Tyler's team with Arcanine getting weakened. Uh, this is assuming that his end game plan is to win with Magina, so this will be this will be interesting to see how it plays out. I uh, could definitely see Tyler just getting up rocks here, although rocks don't do a ton here because like it's resisted by three of his members and he has a Delmas to spin them away. So I could see him U-turn here or just go for a knockoff, as I mentioned earlier, which he does. So he's actually uh, already knocked off. Um, his item is already used up, so that knockoff does 41. This is not a safe switch in. So Tyler made the aggressive play and it worked out. It wasn't super aggressive though because he lost nothing by going for knockoff there. Um, chances are Crook was locked into pursuit. And if he knocked off a potential Sugarberry on Magina, which is the only thing that would have resisted knockoff, uh, he could just take it out the next turn with EQ, assuming this wasn't a Scarf Lander. So, yeah, knockoff made a ton of sense there. And perhaps um, if the Magina was a Z move variant, he could have. Uh, he could have made a bit of an aggressive scout and just gone out to Magina, then pivoted into the Bronzong on the EQ. But he does actually lose Bronzong there, which means chances are he's not getting up rocks unless that is a banded rocks crook. Um, so that's going to be that's going to be pretty tough for Eric to uh, wear down that Arcanine now, as Arcanine is looking like a really big threat. If he can keep Crooked Island under control, Arcanine should be able to take on both the Magina and the Delmars. Of course, Delmas could be could be like a, a trick room abuser itself. And honestly, looking at uh, Tyler's team, if his Magina can get up trick room, a uh, life orb like an offensive EQ Delmas is actually a pretty solid threat to Tyler's team. Although chances are Arcanine will be bulky enough to check it with the intimidate drops. This is shaping up to be a pretty interesting game. I do think Tyler is in the driver's seat at the moment. Just um, you know, whilst removing that Minetric with a Pursuit was very solid. It did give this lander a lot of ground to just come in and click the right move to take out the appropriate switch in. So this is it's looking kind of bleak for Eric. They are taking the time, which, you know, I totally understand. We're eight minutes into the game, we're turn eight. So they're taking roughly a turn, a turn and 10 seconds per, uh, uh, sorry, a minute and 10 seconds per turn, which, is, which isn't which is too bad. It's not like one of my finals memes, <laughs> one of my final uh, matches. But... Uh, yeah, my boy Top Tier Boy is going to be playing his first draft game back in a long time soon, so I'll probably be trying to record that too. I always get hyped when I watch my boy Seb play, so that should be pretty pretty sick. But uh, yep, Eric uh, obviously is in a tough spot here because, you know, unless his McGinner is like a Sugarberry variant or maybe an Air Balloon variant with Ice Beam, He's going to have a real hard time taking down this Landorus. And if this is a Z-move Landorus, he's not going to be affected by knockoff from the Crocodile nearly as much as if he was like a standard item. So, Eric looks to be in a tough spot here. We may see Tyler advancing to semi-finals to take on Aki in what will be a very interesting game because Tyler's team is just insane. Like, <laughs> um, I played it earlier on in the season and we did come out with a win, but uh, he has a team that is very difficult to 
to build for purely because of the offensive threats of uh, Kirim and Landris, like I mentioned earlier, with a very stout defensive core, and obviously Suicune is uh, just a, a monster on any team, to be honest. And uh, yeah, Tyler's been using it well this season, so it will be very interesting to see how Aki takes on his team if they indeed do f end up facing the semis. But obviously, Eric isn't out of it yet. He's uh, you know he's still he's still got some fight in him. He's pulled back. Uh, He's pulled back worse positions in this during the season. Uh, really, on the back of Megino, he's used Megino very well, and he's gone on a bit of a late uh, late season rampage with it. So it will be very interesting to see how he plays this out. Definitely taking this time there, um, but honestly. Uh, yeah, it's not looking too great for my man, Eric. Um, we haven't seen Kirim hit the stage yet, and uh, that could be a number of things. Um, looking at Scarfers on Tyler's team, obviously this this uh, Landris could be a Scarfer itself, but um, like I mentioned earlier, I don't think that's the best call. Uh, he may opt for more like a... It could be Scarf. He, he may have opted for Scarf, Kirim, but again, I don't think that's the greatest call here. Um, he goes for knockoff here, so he knocks off the band as he does knock off the Scarf. So this was a Scarf, uh, Landris. Okay, interesting. So it's not too bad, I suppose. Um, it does allow him to check like a Carmine Latios, which is pretty nice. Um, but obviously, if he gets the if he gets the prediction run versus Bronzong, he loses a ton of momentum. So I suppose Tyler there was just, uh, with that bring, was sort of confident that he'd be able to play around Eric's potential um, Bronzong switch there. So he gets his Scarf knocked off, which means that uh, this crocodile may actually outspeed if he is a jolly set. Um, although that, that that band of pursuit did a lot to the Minatrix, so this could actually be a, like an adamant uh, crook. Although he may have opted to go jolly just to outpace a potential jolly Lando, so this will this will be interesting to see <laughs> how this works out here. If he can get some more, uh, I mean, like knock the fact that he had his band. Oh, we see the Aqua Tail. Okay, okay. So this was indeed a faster crook. So. That was either Adamant Lando or this is Jolly Jolly Crook, and we see his Aqua Tail take out the Lando here. So it's not over yet, <laughs> and uh, we see the Kirim come in here. Now this thing will outspeed the Crook and definitely poses a threat to just take it out with Ice Beam here. But depending on the Megina set he has in the back, we may see Eric preserve this Crook here. Megino is obviously one of Eric's Z move mons as well as Latios, so we may see uh, we may see a potential Gigavolt Havoc on the Megino to not only like really dent or just take out the Coon, but also dent the Arcanine. It's probably his best way of hitting that for some big damage if he's like a calm mindset or something. Um, but yeah, this Kirim is currently a massive problem to Eric's team. Uh, he may even opt to sack off the Delmise to preserve the Crook if he deems Crook to be worth keeping around for late game versus the Arcanine, which he might because Arcanine is really the only thing that stands in the way of a, uh, a Bolt Beam again or just a setup again from potentially winning the game. Manetric is a sack for Tyler in the back. Um, the fact that that thing just dies to spikes means that if he does need to sack it to a Z move from Megina, he can uh, definitely just sack that off that turn. Uh, will be interesting to see how important Eric feels his Delmise is. Uh, whether he thinks it's worth keeping around for the Suicune, which is a fair call, uh, although it does lose to both Arcanine and this Kyurem, so that's definitely something to keep in mind. Uh, the fact that we saw Scarf on the Landorus meant that means that this could very well be a uh, Z move Kyurem. We haven't seen a lot of Z moves used by Tyler on this Kyurem this season. Um, it, he's honestly opted to go for more of like bulky uh, Kyuriems. We've seen like lefties. I know in my game versus him, I'm like, pretty sure it was a lefty set. Or he may have even been a life orb set, but uh, we haven't seen uh, much Z free shock action this season, which is interesting because you know most most people just assume people are going to run Z free shock on Kyurem, and that's the great thing about both Kyurem and Landris as Z mons, in my opinion. Like you don't need to just the, just the threat of them potentially being Z move mons is enough to um, you know force prep on your opponent's part, which is just such a fantastic element. Uh, such a fantastic like mental mental kind of warfare tool when it comes to building for an opponent and it really opens up Kyurem's other sets like sub life orb 
or like sub lefties or even like you know like a bulky like dragon tail set so that's like definitely an aki special he loves he loves like bulky dragon tail toxic curum so we could see we could definitely see something like that but honestly i think in this kind of matchup he's going to want earth power for the, for the uh, beginner chances are he's going to want ice beam uh, earth power also hitting the bronzong uh, he may even be like a barn to to check the laddie but I don't know, we haven't really seen any sets like that uh, this season from Tyler, so that might not be the case. He might just be the standard like Life Orb Kirim, which also outspeeds his crook and blows it away with Ice Beam. Pretty solid in this matchup. Um, Eric does have a lot of stuff on his team that can threaten this Kirim uh, offensively, like Latios, he's got the Salazzle with the Dragon Pulse. But uh, the bulk he has on his team is really just blown away by Life Orb Kirim, so it will be interesting to see what he clicks here. When he makes his move, uh, one of them had definitely taken their time, and I'm assuming it's Eric, because Tyler just sent in this Kirim uh, pretty quickly, <laughs> which kind of implies that he's confident. He can take out this Crook and outspeed him, obviously. Um, if this is Super Power Crook, and this, for some reason, is like slower than Crook, he could be in trouble here, honestly. Um, but I do feel like Earthquake will be his final move, just to be able to hit uh, stuff, like, stuff like the Hariyama, the... Uh, Arcanine for reliable damage, as well as like Suikin and Manetric. I feel like Earthquake is something you can't really afford not to bring in this matchup on the Crocodile. Uh, if this is, for some reason, a choice locked Kurum, and we see a double on Tyler's part into Arcanine expecting the Mage, and Eric clicks Pursuit, that would be an amazing play. <laughs> really just whittling this thing down, potentially putting it in Spikes damage if he gets a crit or something. But I highly doubt that will happen. I think it's far more likely he'll just click Ice Beam here. He doesn't lose a ton by it, especially if he's Life Orb. He always has a potentially Spadef Arcanine in the back to take on Megina, so... He does make the switch out to Delmos, like I mentioned earlier. He does click Ice Beam, and we see Lefty. So this is what I'm talking about. Like, he's often to bring bulkier Kyurems, uh, just maybe more like defensive Kyurem sets this season. Um, that's definitely invested Kyurem, based on that Ice Beam damage. But um, the Lefties reveals that he is not a Z-Move variant nor is he a life orb variant so uh, he's going to sack off the minetric here tactical sack by um tactical sack by tyler although i don't really understand why he didn't just click ice beam there uh he may have feared that eric was sacking off the delmise in order to bring in mcginnis safely and potentially set up all over the curum um if he's like a really bulky shuka variant or something like that with calm mind like shift gear that could get out of control quick you really do have to respect mage it really forces you to play around it like with the utmost care otherwise you will get swept by it so he brings in the <laughs> he brings in the arcanine here and it will be interesting to see if this is the lefties variant or if it is a just straight up offensive variant we see the flare blitz so that doesn't really reveal much about his set but the lefties does so yeah he's indeed a defensive uh more than likely a defensive arcanine as uh, we see Crook come in here and really pose a threat with the Earthquake, which I think he will fire off here. I could definitely see the, the Suicune coming in here, or even just going to the Kyurem, knowing that it can chew up an Earthquake with ease, because Kyurem's fat, <laughs> and uh, just uh, potentially roost up, or just click Ice Beam. But he is going to go into his Suicune here, who actually chews up that Earthquake quite nicely. Um, it's going to be interesting to see if he opts to stay in here and risk the Scald, or if he just uh, goes out into his Megina and starts setting up. Uh, if this is Krokoon, obviously, that's, that's kind of game, to be honest, if he is a Krokoon. Um, we've seen all of Crook's moves revealed, so he's not Taunt. He's not like Dragon Tail or anything, so Krokoon is definitely a threat at this stage in the game. Um, uh, yeah, it will be interesting to see how <laughs> Tyler plays this. And whether or not Eric will stay in here. I think uh, this is really going to determine the outcome of the game here. Because if Tyler already doesn't have this game, these next few turns will determine it for sure. Um, very curious about uh, the set Eric has of McGinn in the back. And the fact that he is preserving it like he is leads me to believe that he is probably something like a Carmine uh, Shift Gear or a Trick Room McGinn set. Which is definitely a threat. Um, the fact that this Kuhn is weakened now really forces him to either rest up or just attack. And if he doesn't rest up, he's going to be in range of stuff like T-Bolt from Megina, which is important. So we could definitely see a Carmine here 
from the Coon, but I do expect him to just go for Scald or Rest, as he does go for the Calm Mind. So, interesting play. Um, Tyler does put himself in range of a crit now, but he gets the Scald off, and that is... Uh, that crook is down, and this is going to be interesting here. We're going to see a potential rest from the coon come out here. Depending on this mage, if it is a calm mind or even like heart swap variant, we see the shift gear, and that skull does 40, no burn. So, if uh, chances are this is a Z move variant, we see no lefties, and there goes the T bolt. So this is this is what I was talking about earlier. Like, if he is a Z T bolt variant, uh, the Arcanine may even be in range of that now. Uh, just depending on his spread, if he's a spit F variant, he probably lives to be honest. And we see the Z move come out here. The Gigavolt Havoc will take him out. So this is this is what I'm talking about. Like this <laughs> this mon here. This is <laughs> to be to be fair. Eric played this well. He he preserved his wing con. We're gonna see if this is something uh, like flash cannon here to be able to take out or dazzling gleam to be able to take out this Kurum. And it probably should be <laughs> honestly versus a team like this. Uh, if he's Ice Beam. Uh, if he's like T-Bolt Ice Beam, Ice Beam would be pretty nice to Landorus. And honestly, that should be on this set because Landorus is a massive threat. Um, if he's Dazzling Gleam or Flash Cannon though, Eric will be able to wrap this game up. But we will see here. If uh, this Kyurem does live, it may be able to knock him out with Earth Power. But honestly, it probably lives considering this is a lefty's Kyurem. So this has been a, yeah, this has been a wild match. It's going to come down to this final turn. It, does Eric have the coverage for this Kyurem? And uh, even if he has the 2 a with Ice Beam, he probably lives in Earth Power, to be honest. Like, Megina's bulk is just insane. So this is going to be... It's going to be an interesting, uh, interesting endgame here. Like I said, Eric, Eric played his, his wink on uh, very well, not letting it take any chip. And uh, I do respect staying in with the Crook versus and just knocking off the Coon. It was very risky, though. If Tyler had just rested up, he could have uh, really just calm it up repeatedly versus the crocodile um, but he he opted to, to click skull there he was obviously slow in the crook so i don't know if you guys can hear there's like a storm a storm about to hit my place and the, the lightning's kind of kind of wild my dog's barking uh, but hopefully you guys can't hear that <laughs> but uh, yeah this this uh, mcginn is looking to to wrap this game up it'd be interesting to see if he has the coverage um, they're taking their time though, so maybe Eric doesn't have coverage for this Kyurem, which would be quite strange. Um, but T-Bot makes a lot of sense. We saw, we saw the Gigavolt Havoc, which I mentioned earlier in the game. Uh, honestly, Ice Beam is probably on his set, just to be able to hit and knock out Landorus. Like, once he shift gears up, he can just click Ice Beam and get a Soul Heart boost. Uh, a whip up, uh, a whip up Tyler's team quickly on the docks and try and determine what his uh, coverage on McGinn would be. So, Tyler has a team. Yeah, Tyler has, um, doesn't really have resist to McGinn's stab outside of um, Arcanine. And he also has a fortress as well, which obviously resists, but it's not really, it's not doing much to this McGinn, to be honest. So he can like, he can set up on it. He can just uh, T-bolt it down. He may he may have offered to bring uh, HP fire, but I do think that's I think that's a bit of a waste, honestly, as he does reveal to have flash cannon. So that was the game. Uh, well played to Eric. Well played to Tyler. I thought they both played really well. Um, I thought like Tyler's early game was really really nice. Um, Eric could not could not really punish that Hariyama too much, and it grabbed two early kills, which were pretty influential in this game. Eric losing Latios was massive here, and I'm not really sure how I feel about that play, but maybe he expected uh, Latios to be able to knock out the Hariyama there. But yeah, congratulations to both players on a very nice season, and congrats to Eric for preserving his wink on the way he did. Getting up those spikes were really crucial as well for just chipping down the Arcanine in range of Gigavolt Havoc. I'm assuming that was a Spit F Arcanine, but obviously I haven't seen this set, so... Yeah, congrats to both players. Like, definitely a fun game to watch. I'm going to stop it here, and hopefully I'll be able to return with uh, Seb's game. Shift tree got the kind, but sponge I sick, I got the suds. My medication, I got the drugs. You want the hookup, and I got the plugs, bitch. Got the plugs, bitch. Got the plugs, bitch. Got the plugs, bitch. Got the plugs. I got diamond two, bro, that's two. Platinum, my debut. Yeah, yo, got me loose. Knife tattoo, bitch, I'm overused. I'm not with the moms, I'm still on bronze. But I'm spinning these bombs, bitch. But I'm spinning these bombs, bitch. I don't need your life.
Sorry, that shit bitch really bugs me. I just wanna fuck up your walls. Come here, bitch, suck these balls. I don't wanna hear that, yeah, yeah, bitch. I'm just trying to fuck you and then that bitch. I'm off the dome and I'm the man, so going in, got no plan. I'm here, top tier. What you know, I got the dope. Lay low, snake in the grass. I bring the fun in my forecast. I'm superior and fear. Shut my skin, clean exterior. Crock and not in my interior. Only fuck with forms, no question, period. Kick doors in like a Kodak moment. Team rocket pokes, my team is stolen. Bone cat bitch, we out here rolling your girl just skin. Got her boring bitch. Beat the pussy up until she's torn, bitch. Beat the pussy up until she's torn, bitch. Until she turns. Alright guys, we are back here with uh yeah with my man Seb. He's taking on ruling his opponent. My man Seb clicks flamethrower turn one. Ooh, nice six five. He brings in Kingdra, he goes hard into his AV Delmines. <clears throat> Choose that effortlessly. So this is not Specs Kingdra for sure. That's probably I don't know what that is. It's definitely not Specs though. But he's gonna double into his Volcarona on the Nidoqueen. Queen. We we'll see Arcanine come in. It is the Volk check here, so uh, yeah, Seb will probably just click uh, Flamethrower this turn. But he clicks Roar, okay, so he shows Mantine as his initial Arcanine switch in. He gets roared out into Delmise, uh, he gets roared out to Kingdra, Delmise chews that Ice Beam, so we're just catching up on turns, that's why it's going real quick <laughs> right now. Uh, we see Arcanine chew that Ice Beam. This is potentially a Scarf Kingdra, I can't I can't quite tell, That's it's really weak, like it's not doing much damage to Delmise, that was definitely not Specs Ice Beam, so this is potentially a Scarf Kingdra, very unusual bring versus a team like this, but <laughs> we're going to see uh, Zygarde catch this Toxic, so Seb just, <clears throat> Seb out here making plays, like, he did not fear, he did not fear taking a water attack from Kingdra. This man knew, that's probably a Scarf Kingdra or some sort of, yeah, it's got to be Scarfed, I reckon. Like, there's no reason not to click Surf or Hydra there versus the Arcanine. So, he's going to Dragon Dance up with his Zygarde. He couldn't risk staying in there and potentially taking a banded Thousand Arrow, so I definitely respect that play. Um, he's basically done what he needed to do with Delmise. He's determined the set of the Kingdra. He's more than likely Scarf. He's... Stopped, uh, stopped it from gaining too much momentum versus his team, and now, <laughs> now we see Zygarde revealed to be a DD set. So, <clears throat> if Seb does have a Scarfer on deck, we may see him go into that now, or he may just go into Lop, go for the fake out to get that poison damage racking up. But he does go into Latios here, so I believe this is her Barnberry Latios. So <laughs> clean, uh, clean prep coming through. I think it was uh, my boy Maddie who uh, actually help team uh seb build this team so that's the goat that's the that's the cream team producer matty brolic and we see seb calculated evs choose the outrage takes him out with the dragon pulse and scarfed kingdra comes back in so he's gonna miss a hydro there very unfortunate for his opponent um yeah pretty unfortunate but i'm pretty sure seb had by this stage identified that it was a scarfed kingdra and he gets taken out with a scuffed hydro so this is going to mean that this kingdra is in range of fake out which is really nice from lop uh this is, this is looking like a wrap because arcanine checks uh sizz and volcarona and mantine is beaten by i think he's got t-bolt on the nido queen here as we will see <clears throat> clicking t-bolt or thunder punch here is pretty free too like uh, everything everything gets chipped like these two die to coverage and Obviously, Kingdra goes down, so <laughs> we're going to see if Seb is going to wrap this game up here with a T-Bolt. But he gets up his rocks, so nice play by his opponent getting in before rocks. Um, he had to scout there for the T-Punch or, or the Thunderbolt, so perhaps this is a bulky Volcarona, like a bulkier lefties uh, Quiver Dance Roost set. So he's going to Quiver Dance up. <laughs> we see Arcanine come back in. This is, this is the counter. And uh, yeah, he'll probably just blitz here. No reason not to blitz. If he's got wild charge to take on the mountain, he doesn't even have to worry about that coming in. On a blitz and defogging, he can just spank that with a wild charge. But yeah, <laughs> Seb's just, uh, he's still got it. He's still got it, you know. He stayed top tier, even through his time off, time away from Mons. So yeah, do not sleep on this man. Um. We see Inferno Overdrive there fail to take out the Arcanine as he does just hit him with a roar. So in comes Mantine, pretty rough switching to be honest. Like having uh, Kingdra come in or Sizz would have been really nice, but he does just click Morning Sun there. So this is definitely Spit F Arcanine. That, that skull did nothing as he fires off the Toxic. So this is going to basically ensure that he keeps Rocks up. But 
we do see the Mantine and fires off a toxic of its own, which is going to be pretty rough for this Arcanine's longevity versus the Volcarona. Um, but if this Mantine does not have Defog for some weird reason, he's going to he's going to have a hard time setting up with the Volcarona. But we see Torn come in on the Defog there, so uh, I doubt that Arcanine had Wild Charge or it probably would have gone through there. So he's going to U-turn on the Mantine. Probably not trying to take another Toxic, as he does just click Scald, so solid play by Seb's opponent there. Uh, Toxic was a fairly obvious play there, like whittling down the Torn, but he gets him with a Scald. Now he's going to get up his Rocks back up, and he's just going to Suicide Defog by the looks of it. But if he does do that, then that's really, that's that's fine. Like, he can do that. Um, but if he Roosts here, Seb can knock him out with uh, coverage the following turn after he Roosts. Uh, Toxic will keep him down pretty low. So, <laughs> yeah. It's going to look to be a pretty short game, but Seb's been playing, uh, yeah, playing well. So, Torn's going to come in here. He chooses not to let, uh, yeah, not to waste that turn, I guess, because now he can threaten, uh, he can threaten the Torn, uh, he can threaten the Volk with a Hurricane, doesn't let it set up for free, which is a really solid play by Seb, and he does have the Life Orb Heat Wave, so this Sizz is going to get roasted, <laughs> I'm calling it right here, as we do see him, yep, roasted, <laughs> so... Seb is just in the driver's seat here. If he does have Smackdown or Hurricane, yeah, this Volk is just gone. Um, we see the Sky Strike, so yeah, this is a wrap. <laughs> GG to Seb. Top tier still got it. He's the modern day prophet, and his opponent just clicks X and leaves. So yeah, GG. It's too easy. It's too easy for my man Seb. Ah, <sighs> not bad. I hope you guys enjoyed. <laughs> um, nice, nice, quick couple of couple of vids. Uh, I'll probably put this all into one hood, to be honest. Um, yeah, if you guys did enjoy, drop a like. And hopefully, I'll have some more content of myself. Uh, we got CPC, uh, what, week 7? It should be going up, like, tomorrow, I think. So, yeah, expect that. Look forward to that. And I'll catch you guys next time.